Hello and welcome to today's graphic design tip of the day. For today's tip, we're going into Adobe Photoshop to learn how to download brushes, install brushes, and use them to create a grunge texture on our design. So we're gonna be doing it to the design I have here. Notice that I have it all on one layer, so if you need to, make sure you group everything that you've created together. We're gonna to use the website Brush Easy. There's other free websites that you can use. I typed in the word grunge to search for a nice grunge texture. Notice the ones at the top are premium, so unless you plan on paying for them, uh, make sure you look for one that's not. So I'm gonna go with this one here, the high resolution grunge brushes. Once you get here, just click the free download option. It'll download in five seconds to the bottom of my screen. And I'm gonna open that up in my finder here, double click on the zip file that downloads, and you'll get the actual folder open. And we're looking for the ABR file. Now simply with a double click on that ABR file, it'll automatically install in my program. But before I just start drawing on top of this with my grunge texture, I'm gonna make a brand new layer above it. So with the new layer button, grabbing my brush tool, and you can see all the brush options that you have here. I've downloaded a few different folders from that website. I'm gonna scroll down until I find those grunge brushes that I just downloaded. Here's some grunge brushes. And then you just wanna look and see which one is going to work best for the texture that you wanna create on your design. I think I'm gonna go with this one today. Now, whatever background color you have in your design, that is typically the one that you're gonna to want to use to create this effect. So holding your Option key down or Alt if you're on a PC, you can grab that color. Notice that it picks that exact color here in my menu. And on that brand new layer, I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller. You can do that using the bracket keys on your keyboard or of course going up and changing the size here. I'm gonna start stamping this on, change my opacity back up to 100%. And it's not going to look good at first. That's okay, it's gonna be one more step until we get to the result that we want. Okay, so I stamped this brush all over my design. Now on that exact same layer, I'm going to add a layer mask. So at the bottom of my layer palette, look for the little icon that is kind of like a mini camera. It's a little square with a dot inside of it. That is our layer mask. And while I have that mask set to black in my color values over here, and the same brush tool selected, I can go on top of this and start removing bits and pieces of that um, texture, leaving just a little bit behind. I also have the option to change my opacity down, so I'm removing just a little bit less to give it that painterly type quality to it. So little by little, I can start taking it away, plan out where you want your edges to be a little bit more distressed. I can also add back to the paint by flipping my color back up for my value of white to add more of that back into it if I took a little bit too much away. The biggest thing that you want to focus on as you're adding your distress in is that your text is not covered too much by it. You want to make sure that your text is still readable. Anything else as far as the background imagery, you can of course distress it as much as you want to add the desired effect. So here is one example. Here's another one that I've done with the same picture. I hope you enjoyed today's graphic design tip of the day.